Good to be here. <laughs> Everyone all right? Ah, yeah. oh, the vibe in here is electric. <laughs> Great to be here in the semicircle in this Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Good to see you. <laughs> I feel like I'm at the UN. <laughs> anyway, uh, cool, good. I'm from England. Hey. Ah, maybe you've heard of it. We used to own this place. Anyway, um, and I'm here to get it back. Fuck you. I'm from England. Long flight. Flew in the other day. Long old flight. If I had a trick, what I did, I wore a big happy birthday badge to the airport because I figured they would see that at the check-in desk and then give me an upgrade. What I forgot was I then had to show them my passport with my real date of birth on it. It was very humiliating for me. Very awkward. But otherwise, it's been a pretty good year. Pretty good year for me. Don't know about you guys. Not that fussed either, so I'm not going to ask. But uh, pretty good year. Pretty good year for me, man. Uh, my mum tried to ruin it recently. Bit of context. Growing up, my mum always used to say, if you masturbate too much, you go blind. I know, it's weird. She used to say that to a child. It's what she would say. If you masturbate too much, you go blind. And then, like, one week ago, she asked me to drive her to get laser eye surgery. So it's not <laughs> ideal, my life. It's not perfect. Ugh. Bit awkward, bit uncomfortable. Good year otherwise, though. I'm still going strong on my New Year's resolution. And as I said, I turned 31 this year. And I thought, I've got to be a grown-up man. Got to take my life seriously. Got to have a big grown-up adult resolution. My resolution this year, no more chicken nuggets. That's right. No more nuggets. Thank you, sir. One clap. Chalk them up. I've got nuggets. That's what I've done. Gone completely for Greta. That's why I've done it. I've gone nuggets for Greta. Trying to go nug zero by 2025. That's the aim. No more nuggets. And I'm smashing it. We're over halfway through the year. Not had a single chicken nugget. I'm doing so well. Slight confession, I'm eating a lot of chicken fingers. Like twice as many. Awful. I've got to say, I think there's a big flaw with the New Year's resolution system, right? And that is that we give New Year's resolutions to ourselves, don't we? That's where we're going wrong, I think, right? Because we're not really self-aware enough as people to know what our flaws actually are, are we? That's why New Year's resolutions are always just like generic, rehashed self-improvement ideas that we've heard other people do that don't even apply to us. What we should do as a society, as a culture, is we should give New Year's resolutions to each other, right? Every year we should be like, listen, mate, this is why you're a piece of shit. This is why you should change. <laughs> and have people say it to us. We would improve as a society so much if we did this. We'd be so self-aware, but we don't. So every year, I've got to listen to my idiot friends tell me their dumb resolutions that don't even apply to their lives. Just going, yeah, I think this year, I'm going to try and read more. I think that's it. I think I'm going to try and do more books. I think I'm going to try and do like 12 books by the end of the year. Fuck the books, Carl. You need to reconcile with your father. Get your shit together, man. Yeah, I think I'm going to give up coffee. I've been saying it for years, but I think this is it. 2020, I think this is the year that I'm going to give up coffee. No, Claire, you need to give up thinking you're on an eyelashes business on Facebook. You're in a fucking pyramid scheme, Claire, okay? <laughs> if anything, drink more coffee. It's time you woke the hell up. What's wrong with you? Get your life together, Claire. Christ. I don't know, man. Just, I'm 31, man, and everyone I know, all my friends, they're just absolutely obsessed with self-improvement, all these little hacks, all these little overnight things you can do to change your life. The one my friends are saying a lot at the moment is, Reese, what you got to do, you got to start your day with an ice-cold shower. That's what they keep saying. Oh, you got to do it. It'll change your life. I'm like, I don't dispute that. They're like, for the better. I'm like, that's where me and you part ways, psychologically. It all comes from this guy called Wim Hof. It's called the Wim Hof Method. You might have heard of him. Yeah, Wim Hof fan. Well, you're not going to enjoy this next three minutes. <laughs> That's a man's name, if you're not aware. The Wim and then Hoff, it's a man's name, it's ridiculous. Six letters, whole name. 16 Scrabble points, ridiculous. Anyway, Wim Hoff, okay, he says you've got to have ice cold showers. And he's this old guy, Wim Hoff, he's like 63 years old, he's got a big beard and he's Dutch or Danish, same thing, doesn't matter. And uh, listen, xenophobia is fine, racism's the bad one. And yeah, I've taken a risk there on international new faces, haven't I? It's going to be awkward when I go backstage. Anyway, who gives a shit? <laughs> Basically, Wim Hof's an old white guy, and you fucking hate them now, don't you? So, he's this old white guy from one of the waffle countries, and what he says is you've got to take ice-cold showers, and it will sort your life out. And all my friends are like, you've got to do it. It's got all these scientifically proven benefits, what they keep saying. Scienti and listen, if I'm going to follow the science from someone, it's not going to be from a man called Wim, who lives in the fucking woods, all right? I need to see some pictures of you holding some beakers or something, you know? Pop a lab coat on for a press shot, mate. All I ever see from this Wim Hof guy is a picture of him doing the splits on an ice cap, <laughs> wearing nothing but swimming shorts and a bandana. I'm not following the science. I'll buy drugs off this guy, sure. I'm not following the science from him. I'll take hallucinogens, not medicines, please, sir. Jesus. Scientifically proven benefits, what they say. They're ridiculous, the benefits. There's three of them. My friends are always just like, ah, oh, first of all, it's exhilarating, an ice cold shower. You got it. it really wakes you up in the morning. Yeah, of course it does. It's literally pouring a bucket of ice cold water over yourself. That's how they wake up hostages. That's a cuckoo clock in Guantanamo Bay. I am a free man. I can wake up how I I'm sure I'd be more alert in the morning if I swapped my overnight oats for a bowl of broken glass. I'm not fucking doing it. Even though it would be easier to clean. 
Didn't think you were an Oats crowd going into that joke, but... <laughs> no offence. Next one, they go, oh, you've got to do the, do the cold showers, man. Great for the skin, cold shower. Amazing for the skin. I'm so sick of people telling me stuff that's great for the skin. We're obsessed with our skin being the thing that looks good and healthy, because that's the one on display, while our livers and lungs look like shit. It's insane. Right? These people are friends of mine. They have ice cold showers to improve their complexions. These people drink. Some of them smoke. That's like having a completely blocked toilet, full to the brim with feces, and going, you know what that needs? A coat of paint. It's ridiculous logic. The last one, they go, you've got to have the cold showers, man, because it reduces stress. Really reduces stress, a cold shower. Oh, does it? Does it really? Well, you know what I find stressful? Breathless goose pimples and a fully retracted penis, okay? <laughs> Neither scream wellness weekend to me, actually. I get it. It comes from the mindfulness thing. We're all obsessed with the mental health. Now I understand that. I think that's okay. It's just some of the methods I don't approve of. You know, some of the mindfulness... Like, I hate the phrases people use to govern their lives. I feel like people who say everything happens for a reason have never shit themselves on public transport <laughs> while wearing a happy birthday badge. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the diarrhoea section of the audience over here. <laughs> Good to see you sat so near to the exits. Clever idea. Love these phrases. Ridiculous, these phrases. The one I heard the other day, people saying, uh, there's no such thing as competition. You're only in competition with yourself. All you've got to do is be better than you were a year ago. I'm like, I don't think you understand how aging works. I don't have the energy that I had a year ago. I used to take ecstasy. Last week, I watched a YouTube video called How to Wash a Fleece and Preserve Its Softness. People change. Good thing about this crowd is that half of you are sat there going, how? Wash it on cold and blow dry, you're welcome. <laughs> Just saved you seven minutes in an advert for Grammarly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know. The worst one for me, though, karma. You know, the way people use karma, going, yeah, you do good things, good things will happen to you. That's why I do good things, so good things will happen to me. I think, well, then you're a piece of shit, all right? How about just do good things? Why do you need something good back? Life is not a 69, all right? Just do a good deed. Who lives their life like this? Analyzing every good thing they did, seeing if something good comes back to them. It's ridiculous time going up. They're like, oh, well, I got a promotion at work last week. That must be because I sponsored that donkey in Armenia. <laughs> you know, who's getting a blowjob thinking, oh, that must be because I helped that old lady cross the street. <laughs> that's not karma. That's just a very grateful old lady. All right, they are different things. They are worlds apart. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.